here we are, man. It's Wednesday. It's Wednesday, and you're smiling. And um, we've got the third. Doing? We've got the third vaccination uh, on the right. way. We've got That's the third right. vaccination. On the way. It's big news. So is that is that what helped you? Uh, congrats on the round, by the way. It's all everywhere. So yeah, I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna drink to that. By the way, I don't know if you have anything. I have, you know. This goes in the book too. I mean, yeah. <laughs> it goes in the book. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Because I, when we started, you know, you just you did your investment round. When we started, you know, we were heading into a Series B um, at the beginning, but then obviously the 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 thing hit, um, and so we kind of put that on ice, like a lot of companies, and and then we and we thought about it. But what we've been blown away by is is the enthusiasm. I mean, it's always nice when you start up a company for the enthusiasm from the investors. Are exactly. Investors. Thanks for the thanks for the note. The team, the money will go. Uh, awesome. Growing the business in lots of new markets, so we're excited. I I saw um, you hiring seventy people. Yeah, over the next two years. Yeah, know, so. yeah. No, I I understand. It's not. Uh, so congrats. That's that's good. Great news. Uh, so hold on. I I poured myself, but uh, cheers to that. Great cheers. It, it, it's a good way to get a few. Um, uh, recruiters on LinkedIn to come after you say you're hiring 70 people. <laughs> yeah, I mean, ab absolutely. <laughs> I love them. I love them. I love them dearly. <laughs> I love them dearly. <laughs> but um, there was another uh, piece of news. So another week, another SPAC, or that's why, um, yeah. you know, or as, as Matthew Holden now calls me Captain Kirk, because I say Spock. <laughs> right? So. Right. You can't keep track of them really, right? There's a new, and I, and I, I saw on his, I saw on their health in 2.00, um, you know, they talked about that, but you can't keep track of the, the investments. And then I, I was fascinated by their report this week that they had to stop reporting investment deals like at 60 million or something. Like they couldn't go below that because there's so many deals happening that like they, you know, they'd have oh. to sit, there, you know, because they, they try to do like what the top like five, six deals a week, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, but the uh, the up health is uh, super interesting, right? I mean, you got sort of the whole... Um, kind of the disease management, the telehealth, the pharmacy, um, you know, the, the whole sort of value chain rolled up. It's uh, they're over 100 million in revenues combined. Um, and actually, uh, um, Jamie Edwards, you know, Cloudbreak, I, I don't know if you've ever met him. Um, yeah, so he, he's, he's part of that roll up. Um, so shout out to you, Jamie. Um, yeah, good management. Uh, yeah, and and the other aspect is the behavioral health, right? I mean, we've been talking quite a lot about that. So um, yeah, it's kind of a bit of a dream, isn't it, to take all these like disparate pieces of healthcare assets and technology and kind of jam them together? Like, don't you think about that? I think about that all the time. You know, you're like, if only we had this and that. You know, sometimes it's like, why hasn't it happened before, right? Uh, but also, let's not under, underestimate the integration efforts, right? Uh, and and it's not just, you know, the, the technical and operational one, but, you know, these are all companies that have been led by awesome, great CEOs, right? So it's a whole team integration efforts. I mean, that's this is just, you know. That's a challenge. It's an operators one. Um, but Go something ahead. a little bit on, uh, you know, we're going to dive even, even deeper, I think, into biology. I mean, you mentioned vaccines. Um, so we with us, um, uh, it's going to be a good friend joining us, uh, Jane Metcalf. Uh, she actually just moderated a panel at our symposium, uh, okay. which we, uh, you know, side note, holy crap. Uh, we were expecting like maybe 100 to 200 people, a thousand delegates. Uh, we had to upgrade our Zoom account, which was fantastic. <laughs> Good problem to have. <laughs> um, so anyway, thousand yeah. Delegates. thousand health coaches. That's yeah, I mean, of, there's probably a portion of kind of, I'll say, our, our crew, the digital health crew, uh, but it's 98% health coaches, uh, mainly from US and UK, but uh, yeah, quite a few. You're touching some demand there, man. You're touching some demand. Uh, you know, we keep reminding we're not an event company because we actually got a couple of people, uh, and I'll get back to Jane, a couple of people actually uh, emailed us saying, hey, I missed it, but, yeah. you know, I'd love to pay for the content. And Marina like, huh. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> no. So anyway, back to Jane. Um, so Jane, I'm going to let her in. Awesome. And hope, hopefully... Yeah, I'm pumped for this um, one. I think everyone is. So back in the day, she started Wired Magazine, but uh, she's much more than that. So let's see. What a calling. Card. There you are. Hello. You you nice almost have you. the view that I have in Barcelona. Beautiful background yes. there with 
Yes, thank you. I am in a live oak forest, um, which is uh, the coastal live oaks in California are really quite spectacular. And I have a couple of redwoods that compete for sunlight with the oaks. Actually, they beat the sunlight out. Um, See the red the oats out, which is why the oaks end up growing like sideways and doing all these crazy shapes. That's awesome. Amazing. Yeah. So did you ever meet Jim up there? Hi, Jim. You guys, nice to meet you. you guys... No, we have not. I was just wow. getting, I was just introducing myself to you through your TED talk just a few minutes ago. Oh, our wonderful. Unproduced, our unproduced play. That was my <laughs> I have, I, I have a parking lot in a dark, uh, <laughs> alleyway we're in, <laughs> when I, we're in Dublin Ireland so it's been dark now for about 10 hours at the moment <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm sorry can I tell you how warm it is no, please please <laughs> and that we might be eating Thanksgiving lunch on the deck oh nice wow wow yeah. socially distant and all that <laughs> turkey from well it's just my family yeah, <laughs> yeah. Dep de depends who you have them with right we're you know my my older one is actually in us so we're gonna wait for her i think to come back to actually have thanksgiving just you know you're gonna delay it yeah i've got i just ordered i got i got the local kind of chipper outside here is gonna is, is is putting into the grill three turkeys for um so i'm doing a thanksgiving for the for the oh, wow. yeah 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 actually our you yeah <laughs> thanks so Jane, you know, we, we almost on purpose never really introduced the guests, maybe just to give uh, a flavor of yourself, maybe a little bit of background for our listeners and viewers, um, you know, the millions that we have coming every week to watch us. Yeah. Okay. Um, I am um, hard, I'm sort of hard to classify in a way. Um, when people say I've had such an interesting career, I'm like, career? Would you call it a career? Okay. <laughs> Um, just kind of do, do what you want. What, just do what yeah. What is yeah. what is a career anyway? <laughs> that's yeah. like him. that's like him over there. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I am best known as the founder of Wired magazine, and Wired was our way of acknowledging how the world was being transformed by technology, and the way technology was being covered um, was about the bits and bytes or the feeds and the speeds as opposed to the people and the companies and the ideas. Um, and so we were you know, based in Amsterdam and, and looking at all these different technologies and going, wait, hang on a sec, this is gonna completely transform our world. And um, so we came up with the idea for Wired and moved from Amsterdam to San Francisco uh, to be at you know, the red hot center of, uh, of it all. And, um, so we did Wired, sold the company, uh, made some startup investments, including one ill-advised investment in a chocolate startup, <laughs> um, which was sweet on many levels. Um, <laughs> but it got me thinking about food and um, nutrition and science. Um, oh gosh, you told me to make a cup of tea and I put the water on to boil, <laughs> just a second. We'll, we'll talk amongst ourselves. No, no. <laughs> it's a first, Jim. Our, our guest ran out on us. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> I took you literally. It takes no, longer. To... Well, I mean, yeah, it's. Uh... Wait, wait, you're having wine. I, yeah. Well, it is 8 p.m. here. So I and and Jim just closed the round of five and a half million euros. Right. Did you? Correct? Yeah, yeah. Jim, it looks like you're drinking milk. <laughs> this is like have you seen these things the yeti cups have you seen these things no but i love yeti oh is yeti what is yeti like a, a... yeti is um if it's the same thing they make insulated coolers um okay, yeah. and they make this like super chic one that uh you know people in I'm northern california thinking, one of my lovely employees uh sean glenn one of out of the boston office said these were very fashionable for barbecues so like you <laughs> They keep your, you know, it's a cooler, so it keeps your drink there cold you or hot, right. you know, depending on it. So, but it's kind of fashionable, isn't it? The idea of a designer cup kind of. I thing. love it. It's super was, cool. Was it's that Jay? Vision. Was that Jay on the other side? Of I, that? That's right. why I assumed it was all about me, but it turns out it's it's not. <laughs> What's the company logo? <laughs> it's a logo. <laughs> they company based their logo on you. Wow. Well, I assumed. I assumed. You know, I kind of made that assumption, but I'm wrong. But by the way, Jane, if you want to go make tea, like, I mean, we're just kind of hanging out, right? So, it's, I mean, it's no, it's no problem. <laughs> but, 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 
but continue. So um, Amsterdam now, by the way, I never put the two cents together. I know you kind of said you've traveled back and forth and, you know, I mean, you know, I've lived there for five years and yeah. we sort of connected a little bit. That's on that, how I but... found you on Twitter was you had that beautiful picture of Amsterdam on the canal. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So are you, are, are you originally, are you Dutch or are you American that moved to Amsterdam or? Yeah, no, I was born in Kentucky. I'm a southerner. And um, which if you look at a map, it's not really Southern America, but the mentality is. Uh, and I did a degree in international affairs and I moved to Europe and I ended up getting hired by this company um, where I met my partner, Louis. And um, we ended up falling in love and ultimately he was living in Amsterdam. And um, so I moved from France to Amsterdam to be with him. And then um, we were working on a magazine called Electric Word at that point. And, um, and then ultimately we turned Electric Word into Wired. That's awesome. And do you miss Europe? Oh yeah. Well, we actually have a house in Amsterdam. We have a, so we have this tiny little, um, they call it surface corrigée, um, which is um, a surface sea, which is uh, a place that would not otherwise be habitable, but you can make it your own. And then it's like essentially rent controlled. It's not a boat, like a canal boat. No, it's like a. It's a no, house. oh my God, that's too cold. Ooh, that's bone chilling cold. Um, but uh, anyway, we eventually got rid of that and bought ourselves a, a 17th century canal house. <laughs> so amazing. Um, yeah. So in fact, he's there now. Um, okay. And my daughter was there too. Uh, so we've been going back and forth for many years. Because Eugene, this show has had a lot of like Euro American Euro files on it. Like what yeah, we are, yeah, you know, yeah. Because like, I'm, yeah, yeah. We have had loads. Like we kind of picked them up everywhere. So welcome to our <laughs> world, world Jane. <laughs> Thank you. I know. I know. I love it. So keep keep going. Keep going. Uh, chocolate investment. Um, yeah. So so yeah. My my joke about that is that um, I started out as an investor, and then I became a board member, and then I became president, and at a certain point, I was in charge of shipping. So I was downwardly mobile with that company. <laughs> Um, but, uh, yeah, so that got me thinking about science and nutrition and food systems. And, okay. um, and then I hit my, uh, my parents hit, you know, the age of 80 and they just started falling apart and I had to deal with mental illness and cognitive decline. Oh, wow. And that got me thinking about the forefront of neuroscience. And, uh, I went to a conference and, I met all these amazing MDs and PhDs and, you know, I was doing a lot of reading and was trying to understand what the future of neuroscience had in store. Um, and all of a sudden I met these extraordinary people and right about that time CRISPR um, was invented or discovered or announced or however you want to say that CRISPR came to the world. And all of a sudden I realized, you know, these people are just like the people who started the digital revolution only in addition to their digital skills, they have an additional 10 or 15 years worth of highly specialized biological training and understanding of complex living systems. And I just had that like moment where I thought it's another revolution 25 right. years later. Like as a journalist, you can't imagine having, you know, the story of, your t of our times land in your lap a second time, right. but it did. And, you know, I was, lurking at these conferences you know it's like I'm not a PhD I don't even have any science background at all you know right. and um, and yet I found myself telling the neuroscientist something about genetics and telling the geneticist something about nutrition and telling the nutritionist something about longevity right. studies and and all of a sudden I realized you know you guys are all using these new tools right yeah. that that um, we have access to We're, we've all got our sensors and we've all got our databases and we've all got you know there's like machine learning is helping us figure out all these different patterns and you know people are starting to use similar tools um, to really transform ourselves now right. transform our health and our our food and all of that so just i don't want to because this is awesome but so just so are we a dystopian future or will i look like you know, a jacked uh, Jeff Bezos at the age of you know 120. <laughs> what, what's going to happen here, Jane? Yeah, I don't know if you'll have his bodyguards, but yeah, I, I think uh, <laughs> I think it's really interesting, isn't it? How people have been able to transform their bodies. Jeff is the perfect example. You know, he went from being you know kind of slumped over a computer keyboard, you know, right. to being this like super buff, 
you know, guy who's um, not at all um, aging the way other people um, are or might have expected him to. And what can we ascribe that to? You know, surely he experiences stress, but, um, you know, he's clearly compensating with, you know, workouts and diet. And, um, you know, I would not be a bit surprised if he were a total biohacker in that sense, you know, that he's hacking his health. And there's so many different tools, you know. I'm sure he's got a lab somewhere, right? Exactly. (laughs) Just on that alone. Did you ever see that movie with Bradley Cooper called Limitless? Oh, no. yeah. Amazing. Oh, I, I actually haven't. Oh, got tonight. You guys have to rent that movie tonight. Yeah. So there's some, you know, it. you think yep. it's like a, a club drug or something. Mm-hmm. And people are getting access to it, but then it's like whacking out their brains and they're to a totally like, right. Um, right. you know, dying. But he gets a hold of it and it actually is a, a brain enhancement. And it's ultimately limitless cognitive capacity. And so he remembers everything and he connects the dots as, in ways. As I'm, he, as I'm sitting here after unpacking 400 boxes and my brain is like shutting down. I'm like, damn, give me some of that. Limitless. Hey, we got a lot to cover, Jane. You got it. We got a lot of tips we need. We got a lot yeah. of things to get through here. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, so, that's, a, well, go ahead, please, Eugene. No, 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 go, go. I'm, I'm drinking my wine. I'm enjoying yeah, the so, conversation. So I, you know, like, I mean, there's so many ways I want to take the conversation, but like, yeah, I gotta, we gotta get some knowledge out of you, but is like, okay, I feel like California is like the center of all this, right? Like, or maybe yeah. Florida, California, you know, a few places in Europe. Arizona. Arizona, Boulder. okay. Boulder. Okay. And, and then I, you know, it's like the gating of access to these kind of therapies. So like, you just think that, you know, playing off the Jeff Bezos example, like, it's like, you know, the guy, like you said, the guy looks great and would it be, have been, and then people kind of judge it immediately or the clinicians look down on it and say, Oh, you're getting stem cells or growth hormones or you know or you have some kind of whatever a system that's kind of borderline you know you know resources are being allocated to you so you can look like a supermodel uh, you know and um so they're kind of stopping it it's like that classic thing of like you know they're just not letting these kind of solutions get into the general public is that fair is you have to have special access or so I don't know. Okay, so there's there's a, there's a continuum here, right? So the you know parabiosis, where you're actually getting the plasma trans, transfusions from younger people, that's the kind of thing that's relegated to uh, you know the billionaires. Um, okay. I, I don't know any normal people that have access to that right now, right. Um, and you know it's it's still not clinically proven. So that's. Right. Uh, that's who knows what the risks are that you're taking with that. Um, but, you know, just like the simple things of, um, of hacking your sleep, right? And if you get good sleep, then you're less likely to be obese, right? right. And so if you have, I mean, this ring costs a few hundred dollars. This is the Ura ring. I don't know if you're familiar with this or not, but it's okay. got little, you know, five little um, sensors on the inside of it, and, you know, accelerometer and, um, yeah heart rate variability measures and stuff. So it can be as simple as, as learning how to get your REM sleep and your deep sleep in every night. Um, or you could step it up and you could be doing things like microdosing, right? For productivity and um, anti-anxiety and things like that. In fact, yesterday we published- I just saw it, yeah, on lithium, right? I just saw right. it on Neo, Neo.life, yep. Right, yeah, exactly. That's super interesting. You know, if people are happy, they're probably more likely to exercise. They're less likely to overeat. They're, you know, so I think there's a lot of things, but yeah, mental illness, I think is, uh, is a huge thing that is worth hacking with pretty much any tool we have, right? right. I mean, there's but, so but many you know, people. Just to, to use an example, uh, and, and Jane, you just met him at our symposium, uh, Josh, right? Clemente from uh, Levels. I yes. mean, the whole sort of business plan, I mean, these CGMs are, are not cheap, right? And the technology around it. And actually, so they are going in the up market and with the bio, the initial biohackers athletes, but his goal is to democratize metabolic health, right? And Absolutely. it starts somewhere where people can't afford it um, or, you know, super interested and want to hack it away. But then, you know, can that cost be brought down as it gets deployed to more masses outside of diabetes patients where it's covered right Right. in some countries and and certain plants so 
I, I would argue, you know, maybe not the parabiosis, but, you know, other things that start somewhere uh, as, as some of these front doors, for lack of a better term. Absolutely. I mean, you know, hacking your metabolic system and, you know, understanding how your body processes calories and, and consumes energy is so important. And whether it's the microbiome or your metabolome or, you know, whatever it will be, we have so many different tools now. Um, some of them are, as you say, quite expensive. Some of them are um, time lag, time delayed. So for instance, if you wanted to sequence your microbiome, you know, by the time you get your sequencing results back, um, you know, whatever your condition was at the time you were sequenced is completely changed um, right. by diet, by exercise, by stress, by all sorts of other factors. So that's not a really good- Unless I have like a little in, in the old, good old fanny pack, you know, like a little sequencer that just constantly right. connected. <laughs> right. No, know. you know, the, the Oxford Nanopore Mini Ion Sequencer is, uh, is a portable, um, so, almost so real-time that. sequencer. And that is an extraordinary piece of technology that, you know, will, could enable you to be sequencing yourself, you know, almost essentially in real time. Um, yeah. It can also help you sequence your food so that you know what you're getting uh, when you're eating. Right. Um, yeah, it's so all mind blow. So is your, is your, does your interest kind of move? So it's all biological. So it's not about like, you're not gonna help me get an ex exoskeleton suit so I can dunk a basketball. Or you know, <laughs> so that's that's my son. My son's into exoskeletons and, um, oh, really? and robotics and stuff. Yeah, um, <laughs> I, you know, I'm not drawing a limit at all. I'm I'm interested in cyborgs. I'm interested in that you know moment of fusion um, wherever it may happen. I went to a I went to a Body Hacks, which was a, a biohackers conference down in Austin, Texas. It's this famous moment where um, Aaron Trawick. Um, who was a young biohacker, uh, injected himself with something they were calling a, um, uh, a herpes vaccine okay. on stage. He dropped his pants on stage yep. and injected himself with something that he and his buddies had cooked up in a lab. It was right. an astonishing moment. Um, <laughs> but... Um, An old front, pun intended. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, no, it didn't work. And it turned out to not actually be a live vaccine after all. But um, yeah, I mean, there's people doing all sorts of crazy stuff, you know, yeah. the closer to home and, and uh, less risky, although there's still some risk are the people who are taking metformin, um, you know, which right. is, uh, uh, like our, is our buddy Vishal, you know, you know, Vishal Galati, you probably, I don't know if you know him, but um He's a big digital health kind of guru, guru kind of out of the UK investor, um, but he's that. That's always his call. Like and like, what's the what's the drug? What's the biggest buy hack? Metformin, as he would say, or I've, I've seen him say that anyway. <laughs> totally, and it and it is proven. You know the problem. There's a couple of problems with it. Um, you really should be under medical supervision. You know to take it, but um, if you don't have diabetes, you wouldn't actually be under medical supervision. So. Right. Um, it also, uh, although it does have um, life extending uh, and protective qualities to it, used long term, it can actually be detrimental to your health. So it isn't a, a long term hack. Um, and I actually know somebody who, you know, picked up cheap uh, prescriptions of metformin in Thailand. Um, I think it's also really inexpensive uh, in Mexico got really cheap versions of it and started taking it and then didn't keep track of um, his blood counts and ended up with a vitamin B3 uh, deficiency yep. and neuropathy and, you know, motor fatigue, loss of control, loss of balance, you know, just really bad situation. It took him weeks and weeks and weeks to get back to normal. It's so, funny. I, I said this on this podcast before, but we had uh, uh, Shandana on, um, from uh, Health Excel, and uh, she's originally from India. And we were talking. She ran a conference, a digital health conference in India, uh, you know, as part of Health Excel. And we um, at that conference, I, I did the, you know, I mapped my genome. Um, you know, it was a company called Map My Genome. But right. they they did a, you know, they did a consultation, uh, you know, with me post, you know, the the analysis, and it was the best medical appointment I've ever had 
by legions, you know, so I got on the phone with a geneticist for like two hours and they just talked through, but they talked through my whole health profile. And that was, was, that's what I found was so powerful. So it was like, you know, Jim, you know, why are you worried about this condition? It's like, you know, it's, you know, you have a, you're slightly elevated, you know, based on age or like prostate cancer. So that's like a, you know, that's like a one in 10, it's going to get you, <laughs> you know, like that's, you know, watch out for that one or, right. you know, like instead of worrying about the one in a hundred thousand, you know, one, and it just allowed me to scope in on like, you know, what are the areas that I need to be looking out for? And I like felt like I should be doing it all the time. You know? Well, yeah, I completely agree. There's a company in the UK called Chronomics. Are you familiar with those guys? I've heard of them. But... They are actually tracking your epigenetic changes. Okay. And so, you know, you can get your baseline done and then six months later, they'll send you a little notice saying, you know, you check in again and let's see what's changed. I think that is the kind of medicine that we'll be practicing in the future, which is preventive medicine, you know? Right. And whatever happened to human longevity? I, I'll be honest, I haven't even kept up with, with the company. Are, are you guys aware of anything? You know, that's a good question. I feel like I had an answer that I can't remember. Craig is gone, of course. Yeah, um, that's right. The company continues on. Um, I think they may have given up their um, consumer offering. And so I think they're basically doing um, clinical research. But is there real, I mean, I feel like there's a real resistance. Like when I talk, I have lots of, you know, probably like yourself, I have lots of uh, clinician friends and, you know, and they, you know, when I showed them, I, like, I was blown away by this, you know, this event, you know, my own, you know, research and, and, you know, I was describing it to them and like, oh, well, Jim, they're just kind of, you know, they're kind of, there's a cynicism to it, Jen. They're giving you the obvious, like, you know, your Irish descent living in Ireland. So you're predisposed to all the conditions from that area, you know, and there was kind of this, the kind of, and I felt like, you know, I kind of said, well, you know, they're just giving me slight signals. Like they're giving me little signals in different directions to watch out for. And obviously they might've picked up something bigger. Thank God they didn't. But, um, you know, but it, there's a cynicism to it. It's almost like a gating, like we're not going to look at that yet. Like, they, it, you know, that, do you find that or do you, maybe you offer- I find that cynical? I think that's smart. I mean, I know a woman, um, Esther Dyson actually, who talks about this, about having stage zero esophageal cancer. Um, you know, stage zero might not actually ever develop. Um, right. In her case, uh, I think she had enough information to indicate that she needed to move forward with that. Um, and so she did, but there are cancers that might not move from stage zero. And so we could be inviting an over, uh, overly early intervention. Um, right. But, well, and that's uh, always been the challenge, right? Because uh, I mean, while you know, genetics are certainly a percentage of your ultimate biological fate. It's not the only thing, right? Um, exactly. I think uh, especially, yes, as it relates to oncology, probably more often, right, with certain cancers. But um, uh, yeah, I mean, there's been studies, right, between anywhere 20 to 40 percent. The rest is environmental. The rest is nutrition. The rest is your exercise. You know, how many genes are you turning on and off every day, right? I mean, there's still so much to learn for us. Yeah. And, you know, I think ultimately it's everybody's choice. I mean, I know that the medical field wants everything to be prescriptive. If you get this result, this is your treatment. And I think that one size fits all is going to just disappear because ultimately one size does not fit all. And, you know, to your point, you might present with the exact same profile, but the choices that you make or the stresses that you experience, um, you know, could be quite different. So, Angelina Jolie, you know, may decide to do, do a total mastectomy, you know, some other person might say, you know, I, I'm going to, I'm going to wait and see. I would rather not, you know, cut parts of my body off, you know, right. on a prophylactic basis, you know? Right. But is the, is the answer, like, I feel like the answer, part of the answer, a big piece of the answer is, um, is like, uh, not to plug Eugene's company here, but it's health coaches, right? So yes. this idea, this idea that like, like when I think about it, like now with, you know, we're not allowed to say the, the word here, but with what's going on in the world, um, the- um, No, all, oh, I know all, the word. All, 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 <laughs> the all of those. We, 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 we started this in March or April. I, I lost Didn't track. Didn't want to be talking about Like, yes, the C-19, <laughs> exactly. And we were but, not allowed to say this. Okay. So like, so like right now, like I'm on, you know, like I upped my vitamin D dose, you know, I'm taking on like, right. and my wife has me on like fish oil or something I'm doing. So like, I was looking at my vitamins and I'm like gagging, you know, every morning I'm taking the, you know, I'm on so many of them. And like, I totally need 
you know, and I'm like, probably like yourselves, I'm like curious and I'm exploring and I'm checking and I'm always like on the move. And like, I totally need someone, but like my clinician, you know, my GP would just say I'm mad and just chill out, <laughs> you know? but I, I need more than that. Or I feel like I do. Right. You know, it's like, yeah, but I'm looking at the studies and people are saying like, I should be, you know, up in my vitamin D it's winter time. We're in Ireland. We're in the middle of a respiratory, you know, crisis, you know, um, and, you know, and he might be like, yeah, but go here. Like he'd take with the tendency with conservative stance, right? Like it would just be, you know, whereas I'm, you know, reading a peer reviewed article that says actually it's quite clear the benefits of that, you know, mm -hmm. I'm thinking it's health coaches. What do you think? Oh, I totally agree. I'm a huge fan of his company. I, I really am. And I, not only am I a fan, I just think it's really important that people actually understand what's impacting their health and how it's impacting their health. You know, it's like, it's the biggest thing <laughs> there is. If you don't have your health, you don't have anything. And yet there's so much ignorance, you know? And there's, it's not just that people don't pay attention, right? People drive their bodies around like an old Ford pickup truck, you know? And it's like, well, I'll just drive it until it collapses. Well, guess what? It will collapse, right? Um, you know, I personally, I am a Lamborghini. I am a highly tuned race car. And, you know, everything I put in my body and every way I use it, is considered. I think about it, you know, even when I'm trashing my body, I'm very considerate about that. <laughs> um, and I, I know what I'm doing and I know what I need to do to compensate, um, you know, to, to stay on an even keel. And yet, you know, the, the, the simplest thing, uh, which is what do we eat is the most complex. Like we understand so little about nutrition and the, re the relationship between what we eat and our microbiome and how all of that translates. And, you know, I remember at the beginning of this journey that I'm on to kind of understand um, how to be the healthiest I, I can and how to feel great um, all the time. And, um, and I was asking a friend who's a neuroscientist and I said, you know, haha, what do you think is more complex, neuroscience or nutrition? And without skipping a beat, she said, <laughs> nutrition, <laughs> which I thought was kind of, you know, uh, uh, revelatory. But was, um, was that Anna? Anna. Anna. Which Anna? Oh, Anna Maikas. No. Yes. No. No. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. My, my family makes it in front of me. Like, if we were, what was the big vegan movie that got a bit debunked? You know, what was it? What was oh. It, like, it was on I know what you mean. Um, yeah. Get that. Debunked. I mean, who was Wasn't it Joe Rogan? And then the, the producer, the, the director had like a four hour podcast. Yeah. Exactly. On that movie. Yeah. Yes. But that I, was really I, interesting. I was going to it was a, I was going to Frontiers. I was going to Berlin. I was hopping on a plane, and that that movie just happened to be on. I oh, happened wow. to watch it, and and I think I saw on one of the podcasts. People were like, "Oh, yeah, it's, you know, it's, you should watch this." So I watched it. You know, kind of hacked from Netflix because I'm probably you know, like you know, in my brain to say, "Hey, watch this movie." You know, I watched the movie, and I got so moved by the movie because it was so well done. Yeah. That I, I arrived at the digital healthcare conference. I sat at a table of 20 people and I convinced them all to become vegan. <laughs> you know, and, and then, and I had them like, I was it pitching. Them and then, and then, yourself, and then right? I think, yeah, Francesco actually came over, you know, it was Francesca's event, you know, in Berlin and um, from Almoral. And, the Almoral and Garden, then, yeah. Yeah, but then she came over, like they came over with a plate of sausages and I was like, okay, well, I'm going to take a break. And, um, <laughs> and then I, I hopped, but they were all like eating vegan. They're like, well, Jim, hang on. And then I, and then I, on the way back, I listened to the Joe Rogan podcast and debunked everything. And I was like, oh, this is all. <laughs> I, I missed the damn good sausages. <laughs> because of this <laughs> all nonsense so my family looks at me going like i don't know where well, they talked me into this and now they talked me into that and they, no, they I, I you know i i can't remember exactly what they debunked i mean i think all of their stories were true but i think their conclusion was uh that a vegan diet is the right diet for everyone and i think that's not true that's okay. just not true i just don't think there is the right it, diet for everyone it's back right? to Seriously. back to this one size does not fit all right it, i mean we're Probably. all unique individuals and you know again not to kind of keep it it's really amazing from a health coaching perspective we're like 600 plus coaches and growing and every awesome. one of them is just such a unique specialty right it, it's it's truly amazing to see and people you know specialize to learn they you know they work with people in that kind of scene and then bring in other coaches to help, right? And other doctors and functional medicine right. and lifestyle medicine, yeah. right? Um, well, and, okay, so, but here's the other thing. It's like, 
of who I was as a 24 year old, you know, student athlete or 22 year old student athlete is not who I was as a, you know, 40 year old young mom, which is not who I am, you know, today. And my body needs different things at different stages of life. What, too, sport, so. what sport was the student athlete? What, what sport? Were you oh, uh, field hockey. Field hockey. Nice. Oh, very yeah. Good. yeah. Yeah. It, yeah, like field hockey is interesting because like, you know, because it, it, the men play that, like I grew up field hockey was a woman, you know, woman sport. And I don't know if it's just entirely is in the US, but, and then, it, it, and it's a man sport in Australia. Well, in Pakistan, I mean, the best players in the world are like the Pakistani men, right? Yeah. Um, and the Dutch women, actually. Dutch women are always That's right. right at the top. Yeah. It's big um, in Ireland. It's big in Ireland. Like I watched the, yeah. uh, uh, you know, go and pick up my sons at school and I see them playing and the, the athleticism is off the hook in field hockey. It seems like it's, it's such an amazing game. And in fact, I was coached by women from the Hebrides. Okay. <laughs> yes. This is Jenkins. She had a huge impact on me. Yes. She used to make us um, do laps around the field, breathing through our noses. I'm like close your mouth, your nose is for breathing. It's like, that's hard to do, you know, but it was really <laughs> mindful. It was the mindful yeah. practice that uh, I think about a lot. So, so Jane, um, you know, Neo Dad Life. I mean, we're kind of, you know, I'm, I'm the, I'm the evil time checker. Um, but <laughs> I know it's cra it's crazy. We can talk for hours. Um, but Neo Dad Life. I mean, you kind of we started off with there was a digital revolution. You quickly realized that there is this. I guess that's what you were calling neo biological revolution with what we've been discussing now. So, tell us a little bit more, Neo Dad Life. What's what's your goal with it? Yeah. So, I mean. I started out being obsessed with the brain, you know, just as, and as a, a, you know, a publisher, how people consume information and how people learn has been something I've been interested in, you know, my whole life. And then with mental illness and cognitive decline in my family, and then thinking about that as like an epidemic, you know, that's where I started. And um, I, you know, ran into a friend who was at the forefront of the uh, consumer genomics uh, business. And she said, yeah, but you got to look, check out what's happening in genomics. Um, and, and then of course I, I, I began to read more about synthetic biology and, um, you know, I started the longevity practice, um, you know, maximizing human performance, uh, which isn't necessarily the same thing as longevity, um, you know, advanced reproductive technologies, you know, there's amazing stuff happening there. The whole concept of an artificial gamete, you know, uh, regenerative medicine, stem cell science, um, you know, it, it's, there's just so much that's been enabled by, you know, digital technologies, whether it's, you know, artificial intelligence or machine learning or neural networks, you know, it's um, imaging technologies that allow us to see inside the brain at the resolution of, a, of an individual neuron, you know, to see a thought or an emotion, you know, pass through models of the brain to actually be constructing models of the brain. Um, you know, we're, we're sequencing the genome, we're mapping the brain, we're working on models of the immunome, um, the metabolome. Uh, I recently joined the um, advisory board of the Human Vaccines Project, and they are literally um, modeling the human immunological system. You know, it's just, it's, on a certain level, it's, a, it's a sort of an unimaginable hubris, you know, that we could yeah. understand something as complex as, as human biology. On the other hand, it's clearly our destiny, you know, right. to um, to do that, right? To to create these tools and use these tools to look inside ourselves, right? The digital revolution was our our institutions, if you will. It was like how you work and how you um, learn and how you do your um, communications and you know your um, entertainment, right? That it was and, uh, pillars of our society, basically, like it changed our legal structure, changed our government, destroyed our democracy. No, it didn't, but, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> um, but these are, right. <laughs> this close. <laughs> Just a little bit, for maybe a short time, maybe it'll come back, I don't know. But, um, you know, now all that technology is going internal, it's going inside and we're using it on ourselves. And, you know, ultimately this could end up being the final frontier, who knows? I mean, I still like space and in fact, that's the whole other aspect of this too, right? What is um, space exploration going to teach us about our own bodies and about our, you know, protecting ourselves against radiation or, um, you know, in, um, are we going to use our genetic engineering, you know, capabilities to engineer spacefaring humans, right? right. And, um, so what I, if, I, uh, 
I participated in, um, um, it was an event with the European Space Agency and uh, sort of my call to action was, I mean, it's truly amazing. Why can't we apply um, the performance training, right? Um, that the astronauts go through to every single human being on earth, right? Like how do we democratize that? I mean, just as an yeah. example. Exactly. Yeah. Lisa Sohn is working on that too, right? Like Lisa Sohn is doing some. Yeah, she's with the. Uh, she's with NASA. She's some. Yeah, I. I really. I check in with her. Yeah, she's then, uh, an mentioned, advisor to the you, health you part Esther, of it. You mentioned Esther Dyson. The first time I met Esther Dyson, I met her in Dublin, um, and she was coming from Africa from some project in Africa. She stopped in Dublin for like a couple hours with us, and then was heading to Russia to train as a cosmonaut. Yes. Oh, very right. cool. Yeah. Well, and that that's what happens, right? Is all of these technologies move out of the government labs and the academic labs and the large institution and corporate labs right. until they're, you know, you, you your surgeon, you know, boned up on his uh, his surgery, his operation on YouTube last night, right? He <laughs> just found a YouTube video. It's like, oh yeah, how am we going to do that again? You know, right. some democratization of of biological technologies, you know, could lead to extraordinary. Um, you know, increase in diversity, right? right? I mean, Juan Enrique wrote this fabulous piece for us. So Neo Life is a newsletter and it's a website and it's a book. Okay. Um, and, you know, I want it, to, it's a podcast. I, I told you, Gene, I'm working on a podcast right now, um, which we will launch next year. And we'd like to awesome. get into live events as well um, because our whole goal with Neo Life, with the Neo Life Project is to help people first of all, understand these technologies and how they can transform us. And okay. secondly, to, I think you asked this question at the very beginning of the podcast, and I, I realize I'm just not getting around to it. Um, creating a positive vision for the future, right? <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, when we talk about synthetic biology, when we talk about genetic engineering, when we talk about, you know, brain hacking, you know, our, our instinct as, as homo sapiens is, Oh, danger, danger, right? This is going to be bad. And what could possibly go wrong? And, you know, looking for threats and identifying threats and anticipating them is right. how we have survived. And so we have to stop and acknowledge that. But um, we got to move beyond that because it could, it could just, we could circle around the drain in that way. It's like, oh, that's a threat. So don't do it. But if we don't do it, that's a bigger threat. And so right. what right. we need to do is use our design thinking. So use our science fiction. Um, and our design thinking process to rather than think about all the things that could go wrong, let's focus on the things that can go right and design for those outcomes. And it. so Neolife is not a traditional journalistic endeavor where I don't feel like it's my job to uh, report on everything that happens on the neobiological frontier, you know, good and bad. I think there'll be plenty of people who are going to do that for me. What I see our job is, is identifying those things that have the greatest potential for leading us into a better future. And I have this analogy, because back to sports. Um, I, so I was a forward in field hockey, right? So I was a goal scorer and my sister was a goalie. And so she would put on these big pads, these big white pads over her feet and shins and knees. Um, and then she would use her, her legs to stop the ball and kick it out of the goal, right? And so she would paint her pads with bright white shoe polish to make them as optical white as possible so that when I'm coming down the field, I know where she is, right? Because her bright white pads are showing me where the goal is, but I'm looking at her pads. Because right. that's what's got my attention. And right. so if what you're looking at, you know, is negative, chances are you'll drive us right there. You know, right. it's, like a lake. So, it's like a lake and golf. It's exactly. Like, yeah. <laughs> Do not look at the sand trap. Exactly. <laughs> um, and so I'm looking for signals. You know, right. I'm looking for the germ of an idea, the, the, the latest research paper, the technological innovation, the, um, the intention. I'm looking for the intention to um, how this all works together. And so, you know, transforming our healthcare systems is part of it, but not all of it. You know, um, all of these other things that are happening outside of our medical systems 
are really important. And digital health is enormously important because it's showing us that maybe we don't need to take a chemical, a thing that will chemically alter our brains. Maybe we can do things in less invasive ways, uh, less intrusive ways. So I'm a huge fan of um, digital therapeutics. I'm a huge fan of placebos. You know, I'm a huge fan of mental health. I mean, Alexandra Drain talks about life sucks disease, you yeah. know, and I think that's a huge part of what we suffer from. And if we could get around that, however we do that, whether it's, you know, cognitive behavioral therapy, whether it's microdosing lithium or, or, you know, psilocybin or something like that, or whether it's just, you know, simply getting more rest and reducing stress and, you know, getting access to healthy food, you know, and maybe, and maybe that healthy good- food is... I think the good weather and some breathing exercises helps. Right. Well, if you need it, if you need someone for the longevity experiments to experiment on, I'm very available. <laughs> Are you interested in living forever? Yeah, totally, totally. Really? <laughs> I'm, why am I not surprised, Jim? I'm totally not surprised. <laughs> yeah. I don't so know. Ch- I, I, I worry about living forever. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. It's a bit, you know, well, I, that's the thing, like the, the idea is like, if you're going to live to like 150 years of age, you know, when you, you know, you get married and you, you know, you raise your kids and they go off to college and you're, you know, 50 years of age and you look at your wife and she looks at you and say, we got another hundred years together. <laughs> and then you want to be very careful about who you marry. Yeah. Whole, <laughs> you know, those vampire stories <laughs> are really interesting. You know, that like the, somebody turned the 12 year old into a vampire. So now you've got like a 120 year old, 12 year old, you know, it's like, um, Which I'm going to have nightmares for the, tonight. <laughs> for the record, for the record, in case my wife watches, I'd be delighted to spend another hundred years with her. Just so she- yeah, good catch. Good catch. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know if human, human nature can evolve that quickly. Right. That, that would be an interesting question. Yeah. yeah, changes wait, everything. Wait, right? wait I, I, I totally missed it. As I was thinking, like, I didn't want to just like double down on gyms because Marina knows this already that I would spend like 300 years with her. So I was like, I, I, I missed your statement. <laughs> well, so, but yeah, what, what is it that, um, that people get tired of? And it's like, you know, the, the, the vampire stories are all right. about human nature, right? And so the longer you live, the longer you see the frailty of humans, the mistakes right. that we make are you know, our shortcomings and so forth. So, you know, if, if we're working on longevity, we should be working on, you know, emotional evolution to go along with it. Yeah. Fascinating. Wow. What a, what a way to blow mind, like mind blown. Mind blown. This is like, yeah, we needed a good, (laughs) this is largely, I mean, I think Eugene probably told you this is largely a, um, a mental health intervention for both Eugene and myself. This We, we just look forward to every Wednesday and just kind of <laughs> do it for ourselves and hopefully our, our, our lovely guests enjoy it as well. I love it. Well, it's great to see you guys. I mean, it's been so hard to, you know, be isolated and to be disembodied. And, you know, the whole idea that this is the future of our species has just really been clarifying, hasn't it? You know? Yeah, absolutely. Uh-huh. Absolutely. But we started this with three vaccines, right? So three now, you know, I know. we're hugely you know, exciting. Yeah, and actually, I so um, so I'm very excited to be involved with the Human Vaccine Project um, because I now have access to some of the smartest people in the world, and you know they're thinking on it. And you know the analysis came out that the um, uh, this new one is actually potentially protecting infection in the first place. Yeah, amazing. not just you know the the mitigation of disease, but actually not even getting it in the first place, which means yeah. less likely to to pass it along. So. That's a big. Uh, I just wonder if, if uh, la- la- lastly, people have like natural immunity. Like I just, I really don't understand, right? I mean, Marina had it, tested positive. Um, uh, Shane had it. Her antibodies are through the roof, um, right. and I'm, you know, I'm been hanging around and nothing. So, well, but anyway, it makes sense that it, it makes sense. I, that's because you have such a large percentage of Neanderthal DNA, don't you think? <laughs> I'll, I'll have to resequence myself after this glass of wine. So, get to the Neanderthals. Okay. No, Jane, as always, a pleasure, though. Sorry. Yeah. We were like, I, I can't just stop this. Let's, this is, no, you can totally stop it. Yes. No, no, no. I, you, look, look, you're... Heading into holiday you know, mode here. After this, I have to go Thanksgiving uh, yeah. shopping. So, 
Um, yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, no, but it's great well, to see you guys. Thank you so okay. much for inviting Th me. To the thank you for making the time. And uh, to our viewers, just hit that subscribe button. All right. We'll yeah, if you, yes. If you want to know more about Neo Life, go to www.neo.life, not neolife.com. Yes. Great. And happy Thanksgiving. Thank happy you. Thanksgiving. Same to you guys. I'm sorry you're Cheers. in Europe, but maybe you can have a nice Thanksgiving. In we'll Europe. catch a turkey. All right. Okay, good. <laughs> Bye. Bye.